This is the BBC Third Programme. We present W.S. Graham in a new reading of his poem, The Night Fishing. The original reading of this poem by W.S. Graham was broadcast in the Third Programme in 1952, and it's since been published in a volume with other poems. The Night Fishing is in seven sections. Its narrative subject is Fishing for Herring at Night and the third section, which takes up more than half its total length, is descriptive of a fishing voyage. Very gently struck the key night bell. Now within the dead of night and the dead of my life I hear my name called from far out. I'm come to this place, come to this place, which I'll not pass, though one shall pass, wearing, seemingly, this look I move as. This staring second breaks my home away through always every night, through every whisper from the first that once named me to the bone. Yet this place finds me and forms itself again. This present place found me. Owls from on the land, gulls cry from the water, and that wind honing the roof ridge is out of nine hours west on the main ground with likely a full gale unwinding it. Gently the key bell strikes the held air, strikes the held air like bleeding open a door, so that all the dead brought to harmony speak out in silence. I bent to the lamp. I cupped my hand to the glass chimney. Yet it was a stranger's breath from out of my mouth that shed the light. I turned out into the salt dark and turned my collar up. And now again, almost blindfold with the bright hemisphere unprized, ancient overhead, I am befriended by this sea which utters me. The hull slewed out through the lucky town and trembled underway then. The twin screws spun sweetly alive, spinning position away. Far out, faintly calls the continual sea. Now within the dead of night and the dead of all my life I go. I'm one ahead of them, turned in below. I'm born in their eyes through the staring world. The present opens its arms. To work at waking, yet who wakes? Dream gives awake its look, my death already has me clad anew. We'll move off in this changing grace. The moon kills and the harbour oil looks at the sky through seven colours. When I fell down into this place, my father drew his whole day's pay. My mother lay in a satin bed. The midwife threw my bundle away. Here we dress up in a new grave. The fish boots with their herring scales inlaid as silver of a good wick. The jersey knitted close as nerves of the ground under the high bracken. My eyes let light in on this dark. When I fell from the hot to the cold, my father drew his whole day's pay. My mother lay in a satin bed. The midwife threw my bundle away. I, in time's grace, the grace of change, sail surely, moved off the land, and the skilled keel sails the darkness burning under where I go. Land voices and the light ebb away, raising the night round us. Unwinding whitely, 
my changing motive pays me slowly out. The sea sails in. The key opens wide its arms and waves us loose. So I would have it, waved from home to out, after that, the continual other offer, intellect sung in a garment of innocence. Here, formal and struck into a dead stillness, the void sails you no more than your own. And a not rot epitaph fathers itself, the sea as metaphor of the sea. The boat rides in its fires. And nursed now out on movement as we go, running white from the bow, the long keel sheathed in departure, leaving the sucked and slackening water as mingled in memory, night rises stooped high over us as our boat keeps its nets and men and engraves its wake. Our bow heaves, hung on a likely bearing for fish. The more light flashes astern, dead on its second. Across our moving local of light, the gulls go in a wailing slant. I watch, merged in this, and in a like event as the boat takes the mild swell. And each event speaks through. They speak me thoroughly to my faintest breath. And for what sake? Each word is but a longing, set out to break from a difficult home. Yet in its meaning I am. The weather's come round. For us it's better broken. Changed and shifted above us, the sky is broken, now into a few light patches, brightly ground with its rough smithers. Those swells lengthening, easy on us, outride us in a slow follow from stern to stem. The keel in its amorous furrow goes through each word. He drowns, who but ill resembled me. In these words through which I move, leaving a cry, formed in exact degree and set dead at the mingling flood, I am put forward onto live water, clad in oil and burnt by salt to life. Here, braced, announced onto the slow heaving seaboards, almost I am now too lulled, and his watch is blear. The early grey air is blowing. It is that first pallor there, broken, running back in the sheared water. Now the chill wind comes off the shore, sharp to find its old mark between the shoulder blades. My eyes read in the fixed and flying sounds wound in the light which we are to appear in as it slowly approaches, rising, and will break up over the brow of the sea. My need reads in light more specially gendered and ambitioned by all eyes that wide have been me once. The cross tree light yellowing now, swings clean across Orion, and waned, and very gently, the old signs tilt and somersault towards their home. The undertow come hard round, now leans the tiller strongly jammed over on my hip bone. It is as, at last, sailed into the chance of a good take. For there is the water, gone, lit black and rot like iron, into the look that's right for herring. We dropped to the single motor. The uneasy and roused gulls slid across us with swelled throats screeching.
our eyes sharpened what place we made through them. Now almost the light to shoot the nets. And keep a slow headway. One last check to the gear. Our mended, new tanned nets, all ropes, loose and unkinked, tethers and spring ropes fast, the tethers generous with corks to ride high, and the big white bladder floats at hand to heave. The bow wakes hardly a spark at the black hull. The night and day both change their flesh about in merging levels. No more than merely leaning on the sea, we move. We move on this near stillness enough to keep the rudder live and gripped in the keelwash. We are well hinted, herring, plenty for the taking, about as certain as all those signs falling through their appearance. Gulls settle lightly forward, then scare off wailing as the sea dusk lessens over our stern. Yes, we're right set. See, see them go down the best fish marks, the gannets. They wheel high for a moment. Then he'll slip off the bearing air to plummet into the schooling sea. It's right for shooting. Fish breaking the oiled water, the sea still holding its fires. Right, easy ahead. We'll run them straight out, lined to the west. Now they go over, white float and rope, and the net fade out in arm lengths over the side. So we shoot out the slowly diving nets, like sewing grain. There they drop back their drifting weight out astern, a good half mile of corks and bladders. The last net's gone, we make fast and cut the motor. The corks, in a gentle wake, over curtains of water, tether us stopped, lapped at far last still. It is as no more moving, only the mere maintaining levels as they mingle together. Round the boat, drifting its drowning curtains, a grey of light begins. These words take place. The petrel dips at the water fats, and quietly the stillness makes its way to its ultimate home. The bilges slap, gulls wail and settle. It is us still. At last it's also still. We hull to the nets and rest back with our shoulders, slacked pleasantly. And I am illusioned out of the flood as separate and stopped to trace all grace arriving. This grace, this movement bled into this place, locks the boat still in the grey of the seized sea. The illuminations of innocence embrace. What measures, gently, cross in the air to us to fix us so still, in this still brightness, by knowledge of the quick proportions of our intricacies? What sudden perfection is this the measurement of? And speaks us thoroughly to the bone, and has the iron sea engraved to our faintest breath. The spray fretted and fixed at a high temper, a script of light. So I have been called by my name, and it was not sound. It is me named upon the space which I continually move across, bearing between my courage and my lack the constant I bleed on, and put to stillness Fixed in this metal and its cutting salts, it is this instant to exact degree. And for whose sake? 
It is this instant, written dead, this instant, bounded by its own grace and all time's grace, masters me into its measurement so that my ghostly constant is articulated. Then suddenly, like struck rock, all points unfix, the whole east breaks and leans at last to us, ancient overhead. Yet not a break of light, but mingles into the whole memory of light and will not cease contributing its exiled quality. The great morning moves from its equivalent, still where it lies, struck in expressed proportion. The streaming morning in its tensile light leans to us and looks over on the sea. It's time to haul. The air stirs its faint pressures, a slat of wind. We are at the hauling then, hoping for it, the hard, slow haul of a net, white with herring, meshed hard. I haul, using the boat's cross heave we've started, holding fast as we rock back, taking slack as we go to. The day rises brighter over us, and the gulls rise in a wailing scare from the nearer net floats and the unfolding water mingles its dead. Now better white, I can say, what's better sighted? The white net flashing under the watched water, the near net dragging back with the full belly of a good take, certain. So drifted, easy, slow down on us, or us hauled up upon it, curved in a garment, too lost in thicker fathoms. The hauling nets come in, sewing the gunnel with herring scales. The air bunches to a wind and roused sea cries. The weather moves and stoops high over us, and there the forked tern, where my looks whetted on distance, quarters its hunting sea. I haul slowly, Inboard the drowning flood as into memory, braced at the breath side in my native nerves. We haul and drift them home, but the winds slowly turn round on us and gather towards us with dragging weights of water, sleekly swelling across the humming sea and gather heavier. We haul and hold and haul well the bright chirpers home, so drifted whitely all a blinding garment out of the grey water. And hauling hard in the drag, the nets come in, the hedge-rope a sore pool and feeding its brine into our hacked hands. Over the gunnel, over into our deep lap, the herring come in, staring from their skills, Fruitful as our deserts would have it, out of the deep and shifting seams of water. We haul against time fallen ill over the gathering rush of the sea together. The cams dive down. The strident, king-forked airs roar in their shell. We haul the last net home and the last tether off the gathering run of the sea. And then was the first hand at last lifted, getting us swung against into the homing quarter, running that white grace that sails me surely ever away from home. And we hold into it as it moves down on us, running white on the hull, heeled to light. Our bow heads home, into the running black backs, soaring us loud, high up in open arms of the towering sea. The steep bow heaves, hung on these words, towards that silence 
the one home out of time becomes. It is the skilled keel itself, knowing its own fathoms it further moves through, with us there, kept in its common timbers, yet each of us, unwound upon by a lonely behaviour of the all-common ocean. I cried headlong from my dead. The long rollers, quick on the crest and shared with fine foam, surged down, then sledge their green tons weighing dead down on the shadowed deck boards and shook off all that white arrival upon us back to falter into the waking spoil and to be lost in the mingling world. So we were started back over that sea we had walked widely all fish seasons and over its shifting grounds, yet now risen up into such humours I felt like a farmer tricked to sea for it sailed sore against us. It grew up to black banks that crossed us. It stooped beaked. Its brine burnt us. I was chosen and given. It rose as risen treachery becomes myself to clip me amorously off from all common breath. Those fires burned sprigs of the foam and branching tines of water. It rose, so white, soaring slowly up on us, then broke down on us. It became a mull against our going, and unfastened under us, and curdled from the stern. It shipped us at each blow. The brute weight of the living sea wrought us, yet the boat sleeked lean into it, upheld by the whole sea brunt heaved and hung on the swivelling tops. The tiller raised the siding tide to wrench us and took a good ready hand to hold it. Yet we made a seaway and minded all the gear was fast and took our spell at steering and we went keeled over the streaming sea. See how, as an early self, it's loath to leave, and stares from the scuppers as it swirls away to be clenched up. What a great width stretches, far-sighted away, fighting in its white straits on either bow, but bears up our boat on all its plating strands. This wedge, driven into the twisting water, we rowed, the bow shores, the long rollers. The keel climbs till, with screws spinning out of their bite, we drive down into the roar of the great doorways, each time almost to overstay but start up into again the yelling gale and the hailing shot of the spray. Yet. We should have land, soon marking us out of this thick distance and how far we're in. Who is that poor sea scholar, braced in his hero, lost in his book of storms there? It is myself. So who died is announced, this mingling element gives up myself. Words travel from what they once passed silence with. Here in this intricate death, he goes as fixed on silence as ever he'll be. Leave him, nor cap a hand to shout him out of that, his home. Or if you would, oh, surely, there is no word, there is not any, to go over that. It is now, as always, this difficult air we look towards each other through. And is there 
Some singing look or word or gesture of grace or naked wide regard from the encountered face goes ever true through the difficult air. Each word speaks its own speaker to his death. And we saw land at last, marked on the tenting mist, and we could just make out the ridge running from the north to the black rosses, and even mark the dark hint of skier, well starboard. Now inside the bight, the sea was loosening and the screws spun steadier beneath us. We still shipped the blown water, but it broke white not green weight caved in on us. In out of all that forming and breaking sea we came on the long swell close at last inshore with the day grey with mewing distances and mist. The rocks rose waving their lazy friendly wheat we came in moving now by the world's side, and the land lay just as we knew it well, all along that shore, akin to us with each of its dear sea marks, and lay like a mother. We came in riding steady in the bay water, a sailing pillar of gulls, past the cockle strand, and springing teal came out off the long sand. We moved under the soaring land, sheathed in fair water, in that time's morning grace. I uttered that place, and left each word I was. The key heads lift up to pass us in. These sea-worked measures end now. And this element ends as we move off from its formal instant. Now he who takes my place continually anew speaks me thoroughly perished into another. And the key opened its arms. I heard the sea close on him gently swinging on oiled hinges. Moored here, we cut the motor quiet. He that I'm not lies down. Men shout. Words break. I am my fruitful share. Only leaned at rest, where my home is cast, cannon-wise on silence and the serving distance. O oh, my love, keep the day, lean at rest, lean at rest. Only breathe at ease in that loneliness, bragged into a voyage on the maintaining image. O oh, my love, there we lay, loved alone, loved alone. Only graced in my changing madman who sings but has no time to divine my room. O oh, my love, keep the day, leaned at rest, leaned at rest. What one place remains home as darkness quickens. So this is the place, this is the place fastened still with movement, movement as calligraphic and formal as a music burned on copper. At this place, the eye reads forward as the memory reads back. At this last word, all words change. All words change in acknowledgement of the last. Here is their mingling element. This is myself who but ill resembles me. He befriended so many disguises to wander in 
on as many roads as cross in a ball of wool. What a stranger he's brought to pass, who sits here in his place. What a man arrived breathless with a look or a word to a few before he's off again. Here in this place, no more certain, though the steep streets and high street form again and the sea swings shut and hinges and the doors all open wide. As leaned at rest in lamplight with the offered moth and heard breath by grace of change serving my birth. And as at hushed, called by the owl, with my chair up to my salt scrubbed table, while my endured walls kept me still, I leaned and with a kind word gently struck the held air like a doorway, bled open to meet another's eye. Lie down, my recent madman, hardly drawn into breath and shed to memory, for there you labour less lonely. Lie down and serve, your death is past, there the fishing ground is richest, there contribute your slate of cast. The rigged ship in its walls of glass still further forms its perfect seas, locked in its past transparencies. You come among, somewhere, the early children at play who govern my way, and shed each tear which burns my eye. Thus shed into the industrious grave ever of my life, you serve the love whose motive we are energies of. So quietly my words upon the air, I walk their harmonies forever contending within the ear the altar. And as the lamp burned back the silence, and the walls caved to a clear lens, the room again became my distance. I sat rested at the grave's table, saying his epitaph, who shall be after me to shout farewell. Far out, faintly rocked, struck the sea bell. Home becomes this place, a bitter night, ill to labour at dead of. Within all the dead of all my life, I hear my name spoken out on the break of the surf. I, in time's grace, the grace of change, am cast into memory. What a restless grace to trace stillness on. Now this place about me wakes the night's twin shaft and sheds the key slowly. Very gently the keel walks its waters again. The sea awakes its fires. White water stares in from the harbour mouth, and we run through well held off the black land, out into the waving nerves of the open sea. My dead in the crow have mixed all qualities that I have been, and though ghosted behind my sides, spurred by the spray, endure by a further gaze, pearled behind my eyes. Far out, faintly calls the mingling sea. Now again, blindfold, with the hemisphere unprized and bright, ancient overhead, this present place is become made into a breathless, still place, unrolled on a scroll and turned to face this light. 
So I spoke and died. So within the dead of night and the dead of all my life, those words died and awoke. That was The Night Fishing, the poem by W.S. Graham, read by the poet. It was recorded.